I'm a small town boy from rural MP who studied microbiology and became an accidental brand and business strategist. And what's kept me in this business for as long as I've been in this business is the firm belief that brands are beacons of betterment, of, a better, of creating a better world, of creating a better society out there. And what is creativity? Creativity is nothing without diversity. It is different things, different people, different experiences coming together to form an image or an imagination that is moving, that moves people to do what they do. Hello and welcome to Leader Talk Collaborative. I am at the DDB Mudra House on the sidelines of Open Pride. My guest today is Amit Kekre. He is the National Strategy Head of DDB Mudra. Welcome to Leader Talk Collaborative, Amit. Thank you. Thanks, Amit. Amit, what is DDB's uh, Open Pride all about? Tell us something about it. You know, DDB is a part of the Omnicom Group and um, uh, Open Pride actually constitutes one of Omnicom's three diversity uh, pivots. Uh, it's an, an employee resource group, if you will. Uh, so Omnicom has three ERGs uh, that serve uh, towards the cause of inclusion and diversity. One is called uh, Omni Women, which is all about uh, gender equality, especially seen from the lens of women and fair representation of women at workplace. Second one is Open Pride, which is um, really from the point of view of LGBTIQ plus inclusivity. Uh, how do you make it, you know, uh, the workplace really safe and equal uh, for people from the LGBTIQ community. And the third one is called Add Color, uh, which really deals with uh, people from different races and ethnicity. Perhaps a conversation that's more relevant in certain Western uh, geographies like the US where you have uh, the Hispanic population or the African American population uh, and perhaps less relevant in India though you never know. So yeah, Open Pride is specifically dedicated and focused on LGBTIQ plus equality at workplace and making the workplace uh, a, a safe, happy and, and equal uh, opportunity uh, a place for people from the queer community. Fabulous. So, some time back we just uh, heard what uh, Keshav Suri, right. the executive director of the Lalit Group, had to uh, talk about. It, it just, just sum up the conversation for me. What did he say? And yeah, I mean, you're, you're asking me a pretty difficult one to, you know, kind of emulate because Keshav is uh, one of those people who's uh, who's who's led the cause for the community and has led it by example. Uh, he's one of the few openly homosexual leaders, corporate leaders uh, in the country alongside uh, Radhika Piramal. And he's, he's, he has the Keshav Suri Foundation which does many things right from you know, spreading awareness to creating conversations about the issue, uh, spreading right awareness about the community, making sure that the community get, uh, gets the kind of benefits that it must get. But I think one of his most uh, fundamental contributions and that's something that all of us know has been in being a part of uh, uh, the key petitioners that really petitioned against uh, Section 377. So we do uh, many events as part of the Open Pride initiatives ever since we started Open Pride two years ago. And we invite people who are leaders from within the community to kind of you know, inspire. And that's what Keshav was here for. Uh, and of course also to launch what we call DDB tra Transit. And DDB Transit is something that we thought of as our concrete step in taking forward our commitment to the LGBTIQ cause where we've decided to design the first of its kind uh, internship program for the transgender community. It has been designed in a way that it, it, it really addresses some of the specific needs of the transgender community. Wonderful. In fact, in fact, in the RPG conference, the annual conference where we invite distinguished leaders to yeah. talk about you know, various things this year, for well, the last year, we had uh, Mr. Patu Ketwani, uh, Keswani, who happens to be the chairman of uh, the elementary group, yeah. and he had a fascinating story to share about the you know PWDs who have who he has recruited, and they're doing a fabulous job in in his organization. My other question to you is: Do you, as the head of strategy, uh, see uh, brands talking about purpose inclusion? Do you also believe that? organizations can help um, increase their brand value or create a better brand if they have you know purpose and inclusion as part of their branding strategy sure first of all i think purpose and inclusion they're 
interlinked, uh, but they're not the same in the, in the way that uh, a certain organization's purpose, if it's designed in a particular way, can have inclusion as a part of it, but not all purposes uh, need to have inclusion. It depends on how you uh, envision or how an organization or its leadership envisions the purpose, whether or not it allows for inclusion. And of course, you know, the desire in, in today's modern progressive environment is for all organizations to embrace inclusivity as part of the purpose as they, as, as they design it. Because, you know, diversity is here to stay. And with diversity, inclusion, inclusion kind of, you know, comes along. One works, has to work in tandem with the other. This is an interesting one. I, I, I'm sorry to interject here, but I remember uh, reading when I was researching this, and it's Verna Myers that talked about that diversity is being called to a party, inclusion is being invited to dance. Absolutely. That's a beautiful Absolutely. quote, I remember that. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more with you. In fact, you know, I'm sure that organizations like yours, and uh, I think you were talking about the, the happiness project that you all have embarked upon. And uh, from what I understand, that's a project which is also uh, designed in a way that it, it, it accounts for happiness of all the people that comes in contact with your own organization. Yeah, so it's not really a project, Amit. It is, it is what our brand promise is at the corporate level. That's right. RPG's brand promise is um, happiness. Our uh, brand tagline is Hello Happiness. The reason we, we, we zeroed in on this is primarily because a huge amount of value rests in um, people at RPG which is what uh, Chairman Mr. Harsh Goenka uh, spends an inordinate amount of time. He spends 50 to 60 percent of his time to, on people, on people related matters to ensure um, that they perform to its maximum. So in its, in its true sense, in its real sense, um, it, it, people are assets um, and he truly believes in that, the organization believes in that. Um, and then not only saying that, we've, we've followed it up with, with uh, policies uh, since uh, S. Venkatesh, who is the uh, president of HR, he came in, we've had a, 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 a series of um, you know, policies. Not only we've, we've launched happiness, but also we're backing it up. And in fact, we're trying to see how do we take happiness forward. Yeah, uh, and I, I also like what you said, and so if, you know, I want to make a point about it, that this, these are uh, practices that you will typically see in certain kind of companies. But I, I think I want to, I, I beg to differ a little bit because it's not something that I think at least is restricted only to certain kind of companies. I mean, you said earlier that I've been doing the strategy job, uh, the brand and business strategy job now for almost two decades and over. And if somebody asks me what's my definition of strategy, my answer is very simple. There is nothing called strategy. There are only people. You know, there are people as consumers, there are people as employees, there are people as your clients, there are people as your service providers, your suppliers, as your own family. And I think the best of brands and the best of businesses actually thrive and flourish if they, if they treat and respect all these different kinds of people that they come in contact with day in, day out and, and work towards a goal or a mission that, that really makes those people uh, feel uh, fruitful and 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 happy and which and, is perhaps wanting to come to office absolutely, on, absolutely. on a Monday morning and uh, what drives them emotionally the things that they feel for which is something that we pride ourselves in on right at at the DDP Mudra Group we give brands emotional advantage which comes from the belief that people are driven by the things that are important to them, that the things that they feel for. And what Jim Hesket says, that it all begins with people. If you've got the right people, you train them well, if you've got the right people as employees, as partners, as clients, just do everything that you can to make sure that they are happy, that they are, uh, they feel fulfilled in everything that they're doing. And once you take care of that, every other thing that falls on the chain all the way down to profits, productivity, the kind of partnerships that you form as an organization with whoever you form it with, everything else falls in place. One more thing, a sure. couple of years back, again, I consider ourselves to be an outlier in that sense. Yeah. It's perhaps the only legacy, large legacy Indian conglomerate where you can call your chairman by the first name. <laughs> that, that happened four years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, but to come to that, actually, yes, we are on the on the DNI side. We have taken some, um, you know, steps, uh, interesting steps. Um, but for that, the best is, 
I'll ask my colleague Pratima Salunke, who heads DNI, to share her thoughts. Inclusion is an integral part of our brand from Promise Happiness. Uh, and in this space, there are three areas that we focused on. Gender, and very happy to share that we already achieved 25% of women in the entire RPG group. In the space of nationalities, we are proud to share that we have more than 40 nationalities in our group. And last but not the least is what the effort that we do for people with disabilities. And in this space, over the last two to three years, we've hired more than 200 people who, had, who have some form of disability. That's almost one percentage of the group. This is where we are today and a long way to go. Uh, but I think the next chapter for us is going to be LGBTQ. Uh, you have the right purpose, you have the DNA in place, you have a brand in place. Um, but at the end of the day, organizations are looking at commerce. Um, where is that, how do you bridge this gap between care and commerce? Any views? I don't think it's a gap at all. I think it's a, it's a fantastic con confluence, you know, of commerce and community. And what at least organizations like ours, for instance, have to offer, which is creativity. And that's the pride that we take, and I think that's also the kind of specialization that we bring to the fore, which is a happy combination of, or a confluence of creativity, community, and commerce. And what sits right at the center of it, Sumit, is uh, I spoke about people earlier, and traditionally, at least as, an, as a communications group or an advertising agency, you're trained, you're hardwired to think of your consumers as consumers. And like I said earlier, we think of them as people. And people, essentially, unlike what we think, are not rational human beings at all. They're emotional, they're unreasonable, they're completely irrational in the way they think. In fact, people uh, feel much more, they think less much, less than we think they do, you know. And if brands really make meaningful <laughs> contributions... Uh, they, they, can, they can shape culture. Absolutely. Yeah, they have the power That's culture. where brands make true meaning and true and lasting relationship with consumers. And what's, what, what are all brands in search of? All brands are in search of those lasting relationships. Uh, and that's where I think the, 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 sort of, you know, the, 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 the jigsaw puzzle of uh, doing something for the community because people are a part of the community and when, when they see you uh, adding uh, a higher level of meaning to their lives, to the society that they live in, they form you know, kind of very, very strong bonds with you. And at the end of the day, that's what the business we're in. Thank you, Amit. Thank you for being on Leader Talk Collaborative as our first guest. It has been wonderful hearing your views um, on brands, on purpose, diversity, inclusion. Um, and I can't thank you enough for this. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, it, it's been great talking to you, also learning about uh, the things that you're doing at uh, the RPG Group. Mm -hmm.